Two years ago, I started working with a company called Star Thermoplastics. Now, Star had a very interesting situation. They had a very outdated website and actually were quite embarrassed by what was showing their online presence. So let me take a look, let's take a look at what their website looked like. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty big embarrassment. We've got pixelated images, we've got graphics all over the place. So when we started looking at what was important to them, we had to take a step back from the design and we had to take a look at what are we trying to achieve with the website. So when we look at this, you'll see here that thermoplastic elastomers, and who doesn't love that, right? Not exactly a toe-tapping subject, but so important to them. Thermoplastic elastomers get 19,200 searches a month. Not too bad. But then we've got TPE, which is the abbreviation of that phrase, gets 486,000 searches a month. I mean, that is a million dollar game changer for this company. So when we started digging, we figured out what does the prospect need? And maybe it's not about how they see themselves, the company that is, but what the searcher is expecting to find them under. So here's the point is that Google's not, it's not about Google. It's about the fact that we need to get in touch with our audience before we ever start worrying about Google. And Google is not all knowing. Google does not know every single nuance of your business. You do. You're the one that live and breathe your business every day. You know the objections. You know the complaints. You know all the little, little things that people bring up during a sales conversation that that's what they turn to Google for. That's what they'll Google. And oftentimes, you know, we are in love with our brand. We make up phrases, we make up um, uh, mission statements, and quite frankly, no one cares about those things, and certainly not a searcher on Google. So what we have to think about is what is their specific behavior, and what can we learn about that before we ever go to design? On average, B2B re researchers do 12 searches prior to engaging on a specific brand's website. 12 searches. That is a lot of pre-activity before they ever even get to your website. 90% of B2B researchers who are online use search specifically to research business purchases. Now, what I've heard in my programs is that a lot of business owners think it's all B2C. And that does not, that kind of marketing does not apply to me. Well, it absolutely does. A B2B environment has just as many searches as a B2C environment. In fact, probably more because the education is so much more in depth when it comes to a B2B offering. So Marketing Espionage is the title of my new book. And we're using best practices, the, the tools that have been in my industry for well over 15 years. Yes, there was an internet 15 years ago when the dinosaurs walked the earth. <laughs> and what we want to look at is how can I share my tools, the tools of my trade, and make it easy and uh, non-technical for business owners. Because the bottom line is you're going to be responsible for the performance and the budgeting of your online marketing. So there's three ways to do marketing espionage. Number one is to spy on yourself. Let's take a look at what the customer sees before they ever get to your site. Number two, let's spy on our prospects. What's in their heads and how can we connect with them to the content that we create? And then finally, the most fun, is spying on your competitors. Why do you always see that competitor in that spot? Why aren't you there? Well, we can reverse engineer what they're doing and use it to our advantage. I like to think of it, we can leverage their marketing budget to our benefit. So let's start to spy, let's take a look. So 81% of shoppers conduct online research before buying. That is a massive amount. Now, 40% of all traffic going to Google is through mobile devices. Think about your own behavior, right? You're, you're searching when you're, when you're at the grocery store, you're at the mall, and you're looking for different options and different variants. So we have to be mindful. It's not all happening on a desktop. There's different modalities for how people are going to search for you. So let's go back to Star Thermoplastics and talk about the power of a search result page. So what you're seeing here is the organic search results when I type in Star Thermoplastics. So what's so important is that you focus on what is most important here and what I can do to change it. So do you own every single position on this page? Can you go in and edit it yourself? And is there anything inflammatory on this page? Anything that you didn't realize was there? I can't tell you how many business owners have Googled themselves for the first time in my sessions and they don't have any idea why the things are there. So we wanna make sure we capture that. This search result page is our brand reputation through Google. And we wanna make sure this is very tight. Now let's jump over to Google Images. Now Google Images is the number two way people search for Google, on Google, and we love pictures. Now look at the first two lines. 
These are not exactly exciting photos. And in fact, the gentleman in the middle on the second line is an ex-employee. So probably not the way in which they want to represent themselves through imagery. And then we have, of course, the video assets. And here you'll see they've done a wonderful job of optimizing their videos to be findable for their brand. And I remember there's a lot of very strange videos before we started working with them. And they've really tightened up their game. So when we see them in organic, we see them in the uh, images, and we see them in the video, it's nice and tight. And they feel very proud about how their website looks. Another caveat, if they're looking for people to work at their company, of course, new hires or people that are interviewing are going to be Googling as well. So it's very important that we make sure that we own those search results and we are fully aware of how our company is represented. So I'd like to introduce you to Aaron. Aaron is the president of Pick On Us. They are the largest manufacturer of bamboo toothpicks in the US. So when we started talking about their website and what they were trying to achieve with their site, they kept using a phrase of picks. Well, we sell picks for this and picks for that and everything was a pick. And I was confused because I'm like, aren't those toothpicks? <laughs> and I'm like, what's a pick versus a toothpick? Well, the client was like, well, all of our restaurant owners who buy our things call them picks. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see what the data says. So we have picks versus toothpicks. So let's take a look. So here is the PIX page. Now what you can see is that our human brain does not think like Google, okay? Our human brain says as a business owner, well, of course it's PIX. That's how we see our brand. Well, Google sees it as guitar PIX. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden you have this realization that what you thought it was actually is not what it was at all. What it was at all. So let's take a look at Google Images and see if that's still valid. More PIX of all different shapes and sizes. And then we look at video, this is really interesting. When we look at video, we see Vimeo staff picks, we see Kentucky Derby, and we see MLB picks. So it is very hard as business owners to step out of their ego and to step out of the phrases that they own themselves and to own the phrases of their searchers. So let's take a look at what we found out about toothpicks. Toothpicks, so this is our very high tech process of sticky notes and a keyword tool. And we start harvesting all the phrases that are toothpick related. So there's bamboo toothpicks and, and, and sports picks. You can imagine what the problem with sports picks is on Google. You got a bunch of sports stars when you Googled sports picks. But you Google sports toothpick and you're like, thank you, that's the screen, that's the customer that I'm looking for. So we were able to identify 148,000 searches for all of those pages you see on their website. So significant amount of volume, we just had to make a slight shift in our thinking about where our customers are. So meet Terry Langan. So Terry is an expert and thought leader and speaker on communication. Now her whole business brand is named blah, blah, blah. That's her, that's her thing, she's fallen in love with it. She loves the title. She even bought the domain blah, 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 dot US. So here's, here's what I think, if I see a dot US, rank in search results, then I will get all excited about these other extensions. But think about it, when you search on Google, how often do you see a .us? It's almost all .coms. So a lot of my clients will buy these, uh, buy hundreds of these extemporaneous domains thinking that someday those domains are gonna be worth something. So I'm gonna encourage you to kind of hold back and figure out what is the ideal .com for you. So when we looked at Terry's, we have blah, 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 that was her word, and she wanted to be findable under that versus what I suspected was maybe more like effective communication. So let's see what the search results tell us. Oh, okay, blah, blah, blah is actually uh, a, a, a singer, a pop singer named Kesha, and she has a song of blah, blah, blah. So that was an interesting revelation. Um, so there's no way she's gonna compete with Kesha, no way. Now let's look at images, maybe it's different. Now, what I want you to notice about this search result is that this is the mindset of all searches done on Google having the relationship of blah, 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 or the relevancy of blah, blah, blah. Now, what I want you to see is that all those little colored boxes at the top there, you'll see vampire and Dracula and Count Dracula. Then we jump to happy birthday, I love you, and happy new year. So, so Google is incredibly confused about what blah, blah, blah means, as is your searchers. And then when we move to video, we can see Kesha's there again. We see a rap video and we see an Adidas football commercial. So here's the strange thing is when we look at the data, the data is misleading. I mean, look at this data. If you were in a vacuum and you're like, you know what, my brand is blah, blah, blah. You see that number, 720,000 searches a year. You're like, that's my dream word. That's my dream keyword. But in actuality, 
effective communication gets 486,000 searches a year. And even though it's a smaller number, it's so much more qualified her. It is a, a white hot keyword. And when they search for that and they find Terry in those search results or Terry in those images or Terry in those videos, you had me at communication. And Kesha can have her keyword of blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be more business focused and think about effective communication. So this is a wonderful nonprofit organization that we worked with called Waterstep. Now, Waterstep is a nonprofit where they create filters. So what you're seeing on the screen here are filters. They hire a bunch of retired engineers, and they come in as a, on a voluntary basis, and they build these independent water filters. So they go over to third world countries. They uh, work with the communities who do not have safe drinking water, and they can have one of these pumps installed within 24 hours. And it will last for years and give that community safe drinking water. So when we started looking at their search volume and really understanding their mission, we had to look at water filtration systems was the keyword they were trying to rank for versus safe drinking water. So as you can see, safe lives with safe water. So they are not selling filters. They are selling evangelism. They're selling outreach. They're selling the idea that everyone in the world should have clean drinking water. So let's take a look and see how that is interpreted online. So you put water filtration systems into Google, you can see clearly that Brita has this page locked up. You see Culligan, you see Home Depot and Lowe's. They could optimize every single piece of content they create for this uh, for water filtration system, and they would never get found. It's just the, the competition is too fierce. And they would have been scratching their head because they spend a ton of money on a website, and they're still not seeing any results and, and not a lot of traffic to their site. Then we look at images. Again, look, it's so clear that it's not them. So look at the categories at the top. Home, house, office, building, cottage, and brewery. So if you think about it, that's all the related searches to the word water filtration system. And there is nothing about safe drinking water on there at all. And then when we look at video, you can see that it's owned by Pure Water Solutions, Home Depot, and Lowe's. But remember, they were so in love with that word, water filtration systems. We just had to move them just a little bit toward a couple different words. So water filtration systems get 486,000 searches a year. Pretty impressive. But that's not going to help move the needle on their business. So take a look at this. Clean water organizations. That is absolutely perfect for them. 3,840 3, searches a year. Water crisis, right? 9,900 searches a year. Safe drinking water. 15,600 searches a year. Those keywords are so perfect for them. And when a prospect who wants to give or donate searches for that, you are getting them in a way that really speaks to their heart. So it's a very emotive response to what they do. It's not a business response. It's an emotive response. So they have to approach their content marketing and their blogs and their social around that emotion and not around filtration systems, because that's the byproduct of what they do. It's not who they help. So this is, this is a client of ours called Seal Shield. Now, Seal Shield is a really interesting client. Seal Shield, as you can see on the screen, it looks like they sell waterproof keyboards. Well, and you'll see that most websites I've ever seen have this navigation. Uh, products, technology, about us, markets, partners, so, so, so forth and so on. And this site had been part of their brand for well over seven years. So when we had to start looking into who was their ideal customer, I said, okay, stop. Let's stop talking about products for a minute. Who is your customer? And they're like, well, our customer is an infection control expert at a hospital. I'm like, that's interesting. And what's the, big, what's the big risk for them? Well, the big risk was that when they have these units that they move from room to room, there's staph infections and all kinds of bacteria that can be passed from room to room to room. And as you know, that can be a big product problem in a hospital organization. So we started digging in to what really mattered, to what was important to their target audience. The, 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 the phrases speak for themselves. Waterproof keyboards, waterproof mice. These phrases, 19,000 searches a year. Now, we're not going to get rid of that search volume. That's what's built their business to where it is now. We want to take it to the next level. So what we want to think about is, what is top of mind for a hospital infection control officer? What are the things that he or she would be searching for to help minimize the risk within their organization? Well, it's going to be infection control at the very highest level. 
Now, another interesting thing that realization we had here, now I'm a nerd, I think all these things are interesting, but the interesting part is the difference between any bacterial, any microbial, any fungal, I mean, there's all these antibacterial sort of words. Theirs was antimicrobial because it was in a hospital environment. So we had to switch their entire website from talking about waterproof keyboards and waterproof mice to all the different ways that these particular problems show up in hospital environments. So here's the deal. You spy on yourself, right? We have to make sure that our brand reputation is managed carefully. So I would recommend that whoever's in charge of your marketing for your website is looking at the search results all the time, that you are making sure that you are looking at the organic listings, you are looking at the images, and you are looking at the video. Everything you build needs to be defined by a specific keyword. So let's go back and take a look at that. We have for our pick on us client, right? We had toothpick versus pick. Well, we're gonna start using toothpick and we're gonna name our images bamboo-toothpick.jpg. We're gonna make sure that we optimize our pages for bamboo toothpick. And we're also gonna make sure that if we have any video assets that we name it appropriately. Then we move forward to um, Terry and her blah, blah, blah situation. Well, when we started digging more, she started optimizing her pages for effective communication. And all of a sudden, she's getting all these calls because now when, when press Googles it, uh, when I search for it images, there's Terry. And all we had to do is optimize her content using the right keyword phrases. And then finally, we had Waterstep. Waterstep has seen a tenfold improvement in their website and their conversion traffic is over three times what it was before we started working with them because we stopped talking about water filters and we started talking about outreach and we started talking about safe drinking water. And people, that's something that people want to contribute to. It's important to them and they want to be a part of that movement. So this is mission possible for you. So when we do marketing espionage, remember that searchers are out there. They want to find you. You just need to go and get them. Thank you so much.